The Lord be with you. Holy God, our righteous judge, daily your mercy surprises us with everlasting forgiveness. Strengthen our hope in you and grant that all the peoples of the earth may find their glory in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Iniquities testify against us. Act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our apostasies indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its Savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler turning aside for the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus says the Lord concerning this people, Truly they have loved to wander, they have not restrained their feet. Therefore the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. Have you completely rejected Judah? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We look for peace, but find no good. For a time of healing, but there is terror instead. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, the iniquity of our ancestors, for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember and do not break your covenant with us. Can any idols of the, heavens bring, of the nations bring rain, or can the heavens bring, give showers? It is, not, is it not you, O Lord our God? We set our hope on you, for it is you who do all this. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from 2 Corinthians. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Jesus. Jesus. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come forward. Morning, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let me tell you something about myself. I am a pretty good guy. <laughs> do you believe me? Let me tell you about all the good things I do. On Tuesday morning, I have a men's Bible study. I'm going to build a tower, by the way. At 11 o'clock, I have another Bible study. Wednesday, I lead Christ care. Wednesday night, I teach confirmation. Pretty good, don't you think? I pray at least once a day, but it seems like I pray all the time. Oh, <laughs> no. See what happens when we boast about ourselves? The tower we build collapses. And Jesus said, the one who humbles himself will be exalted. And we should just simply say, thank you, God, that you allow me to teach two Bible studies 
and Christ's care and confirmation and that you hear me when I pray. So when we stay focused on God, our lives seem, the building we build with our lives seems to stand. Okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. Help us to center our lives on Jesus and his grace and his mercy. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to look at, by the way, simply living, share enough. How do you know when you've shared, given enough? We're going to look at the paradoxes in the Christian faith. Here's a few. Find your life. You find your life when you lose it. All who humble themselves, from our text today, will be exalted. When you give, you receive. I may have told you this once before, but when I was in college, I was invited to a Coptic church for a celebration. Coptic is an Egyptian church. It was in Minneapolis. And... Uh, the, the person who invited me was somebody from work. And she knew I was kind of a religious kid and thought I would enjoy coming to their, their banquet. Their fellowship hall was huge, held many, many, many more than their sanctuary did because uh, they certainly knew how to have celebrations. And, and the meal was, was fine. There were some things they warned me not to eat, uh, thinking I would not be used to them. And then I was invited to come into the sanctuary. And there, before you get to the sanctuary, there's a, the hallway is just filled with all kinds of statues. But the statue of Mary stands right before the sanctuary, and everyone bowed down and kissed the feet of Mary. Uh, I was told I didn't have to do that, and I didn't, although I, I somewhat regret not following their customs when I think about it now. And, and Mary's toes were very dirty, caked with dirt. <laughs> no, nobody came by with an antiseptic wipe to clean them up every week. And then I was invited to the sanctuary. And in the sanctuary... The sanctuary was filled with icons. Now, icons, the Coptic church doesn't have very beautiful icons. Here's some. That's, of course, an icon of Christ. They're usually small, painted on wood, painted by a priest who studies the art, the ancient art, of painting icons. Now, you have beautiful icons in the Russian Orthodox Church and, and uh, Greek Orthodox. They so use all kinds of gold and everything else. There's another one, Christ on the cross, and Jesus the Good Shepherd. And, of course, me with my young Protestant eyes just thought this was a bunch of hocus-pocus. But... And you can see, I was just too young to appreciate it. What they do, and the reason they come to worship, the reason they kiss the feet of Mary, the reason they have icons, 
is so that they can touch the holy, that they can peer into that which is holy and get a glimpse of heaven. And that's their whole reason for having those icons. You can come. You might not get anything out of the service. You might uh, sleep through the sermon. But if you look at the icons, you'll get a glimpse. You'll be able to touch the holy. Now, from a biblical from a biblical and a, a um, Protestant concept, we would say that we do gather because we want to not necessarily touch the holy, but be touched by that which is holy, by that one who is holy. And we come. We make a weekly pilgrimage it's not always weekly for some people, but it should be weekly to touch or to be touched by the holy, touched by God. And the good news is that we do, when we do come, God does touch us. Through our prayers, God touches us. And we pray that God touches those for whom we pray. Songs and hymns, God touches us. Scripture. God promises to come to us through Scripture and touch us. Through bread and wine, we're touched by the very, I mean, the good news of God and Christ is that God comes to us to be with us, to touch us. And it comes to be with us in bread and wine. We come and we are touched by the Holy. So welcome to the presence of God. Every week, we have that welcome into the presence of God. That's a huge part of what Messiah Lutheran Church is about. In 2 Corinthians 9, we hear those words from the Apostle Paul where he talks about giving. I was very humbled by this text. Humbled because when you realize that this is, the Apostle Paul at this point is asking the Corinthian church, who has a difficult congregation, he said, now you promised to take an offering for the church in Jerusalem. The church in Jerusalem has been undergoing persecution, and the Romans has outlawed the church. So terrible persecution. Some of the Christians can't hold jobs. They need money. And the Apostle Paul is saying, you promised to take that offering, and you did. Why haven't you sent it? And then he talks about giving. Well, here's what I was humbled by. The Apostle Paul isn't very happy with the ministry of the Jerusalem church. He doesn't particularly care for James, the so-called James and the so-called leaders of the church. He calls them in, in uh, Galatians chapter 2. He went there with Titus and had quite a time trying to convince them that he had a ministry to spread the gospel among the Gentiles, and he had quite a time keeping them from making him have Titus circumcised. And they said, the leadership there, what did it, they offered me nothing. And then he talks about James sending a delegation when he and um, Peter were at Galatia, and he said, I had to confront Peter to his face because he went and sat with the delegation from James and wouldn't eat with Gentiles. 
Paul didn't care about that ministry in Jerusalem. But he said, we have to give. I was humbled by that. We give. I was humbled because the Apostle Paul helps us realize Christians are not our enemies. He says, give. Give when they need. Give them what they need. If they need money. Give it to them. So he worked, I mean, it's interesting how hard he worked in this chapter to get the Corinthians to send the money. Here's the paradox in chapter 9. Well, here's a couple of paradoxes in our world. You want to have a friend? Be a friend. You want to be happy? Work to make someone else happy. Giving in this text is an act of resistance against the principalities and powers of this world. Those that would say, no, 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 I need to hang on to my money. Against the values of this world. Paul says you need generosity, be generous. Here's some of his words. He who supplies seed, of course that's God Almighty, who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. Do you ever realize that we are at our best when we give ourselves away? Messiah is at its best. We built this building. Do you know when we're at our best? When we give it away. Another time I was humbled. We've re we receive several calls every week. People wanting and needing assistance, monetary assistance in some way or another. And I had a, a call from someone who Tracy says, well, Pastor Dan, Here's someone who says they're a member of the congregation. Usually, when they're a member of the congregation, I, I respond right away and I t do what I can to take care of their need. And I looked at the, the paper and it did not know the person's name. A little bit later, and so I thought it was a rouge. They were trying to, to just... Uh, say, hey, I go there. Received another request from someone else who says, I attend Messiah Lutheran Church. So I thought, well, I'm going to call this one up. And I did. And I said, you said you attended Messiah. I, I don't recall your name. And she goes, I'm there every week. And I go, really? Yes, I attend the Narcotics Anonymous meetings. I attend Messiah Lutheran Church. I was very humbled by that. It was like somebody hit me in the gut. Allowing people to use the building they leave here saying, I'm part of Messiah Lutheran Church. We're at our best when we give ourselves away. Pastor Dan, will I become rich? <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Nobody's asked me that. If I give money, will I receive money in return? And I go, Go talk to Joel Olstein. No. Now, some of you have told me you have given money and you have received money. That's not merely what this text is about. God provides 
a need. What is it? How did the Apostle Paul put it? You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. You will be enriched in every way through your generosity. And God is able to, to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. Sandy Wood is a... She vowed when she was in high school that she would do everything she could to be a success in worldly terms in this world. Graduated from high school, went to a prestigious college. Graduated from college, went to work for a corporation. She was single, had no children. Her career skyrocketed. She, her income was fabulous. She was flown all over the country for this corporation. She was flown all over the world for this corporation. She had a very nice house in the suburbs, drove a nice car. But one day, she got up and she said, Dear God, I have everything anybody could want, but I am so empty inside. And she, when she was taking a shower, she felt everything cave in, and she, next thing you knew, she was on her knees in the shower praying to God. Dear God, help me. The next day, <clears throat> she went to church. The next day was a Sunday. She went to church, something she hadn't done in a long time, sat in the back pew. And there she held a bulletin up to her face so no one would talk to her. <laughs> but doing that, she was able to read the bulletin, and she read in there that this church was sponsoring a um, mission trip to the Dominican Republic. A couple hours later, she found herself volunteering to go to the Dominican Republic. A couple months later, she found herself in the Dominican Republic. She said this of her experience before that point. I have attained career success, but I did not find peace. I had affluence but no gratitude. I traveled the world restless. They were told when they got to the Dominican Republic that they were not to give. They said, you were in a very poor place. You are not to give anyone anything. She said, we have given people, uh, we've literally had riots when someone found out that someone received something. It might even be just a little piece of candy. And all of a sudden, everybody wants it. The need is so great here, they actually rioted. So you cannot give anything to anybody. So one of the afternoons, they were building, they were there to build a school. And she was working, and it was a hot day. She paused for a moment and took a sip of water. And then she looks over, there's a little girl, seven or eight years old, looks at her and says, water, please, water. Sandy knew she had to say no. So she just shook her head. And she was brokenhearted. She left the Dominican Republic brokenhearted because she could not help. When she got back to her job, she vowed that she was going to do everything she could to provide water and a water system for that village so no little girl, in fact, no one in that village, would ever have to beg for water again. She worked through a corporation, uh, organized people, organized mission trips, got people in touch with this mission organization that she, they, she went to Haiti with. And they literally collected enough money 
and organized enough trips to build a water system for that village. Sandy Wood says of the experience, I discovered the truth of God's love in a third world country. And I discovered that I was the little girl, I was the little girl that God wanted to bless so that I could be a messenger of grace. She was the little girl that God's blessed. How does God bless us? He gives us, he will enrich us in every way for our great generosity. Enrich us in every way. Sandy Wood called it soul satisfaction. Soul satisfaction. So have you been touched by God? I hope you won't leave this place today without being touched by God. Have you been touched by God through giving? Have you found soul satisfaction? Have you given enough? Amen.
we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free by the truth of God's gracious love, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's good creation. Only you know the depths of our hearts, O God. Lead your church to true repentance so that we reflect your light and truth to the world. Call this congregation to loving action in your name and open our eyes to what you are doing among us. Lord, in your mercy. Only you can bring rain, O oh God. Be with those who lack clean water or must walk miles to quench their thirst. Lord, in your mercy. Only you can judge the nations, O oh God. Lord, send peace and justice. We pray for people who are victims of atrocities in Mosul, Iraq, Aleppo, Syria, and in Yemen. And we pray for those dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew in Haiti and the United States. Raise up leaders with humble hearts so that your peace spreads across the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Only you can bring healing, O oh God. Be with all those whose hearts ache, who hold out empty hands, who long for forgiveness. Heal the sick, especially Carolyn Callan, Sophia Fledgley, Emil Ghanem, Dennis Holmes, Janet Littlecrow, Chris Marquardt, Jan Snath, Sean Snellen, Laurie Pettit, Chris Snyder, Lucy Stilwell, Paul Thompson, Bennett Wilkerson, Kathy Zinter, Wayne Myers, and Marietta Young. Are there any others? Keep us by your grace until we join the saints around your throne. Comfort the grieving, especially the family and friends of Evelyn Walton, Paul Olin, and Cole Orge. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, faithful God, we place ourselves and our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were, were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We come again to you, O God, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy you have embraced us and healed us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way, equip us for every good work, that we may continue to give you thanks by embracing others with mercy and healing. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the fellowship hall, we are set up, I believe, for um, a reception for Lyle and Lucy Dolly and the 60th wedding anniversary. Please read your bulletin tonight, starting at 4.30, is it? Uh, there will be a... I don't... Our um, trunk or treat. A number of people have uh, called about that from the community, so uh, I expect it to be very good. Um, four o'clock. Thank you. Four until six thirty, I believe. Then two weeks from yesterday, where I. Uh, planted uh, the stewardship team with um, um, is planning a dinner, a Saturday dinner and talent show. We aren't getting a whole lot of talent yet. So uh, uh, to make that work, we need talent, right? <laughs> so see Sarah. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
united by the gospel, we Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks. 